These are excerpts from an hour-long epic telling of Beowulf. King Rothgar of the Danes built Hierot, the finest mead hall along the shores of the Baltic Sea. And in Hierot, with his beautiful wife, Roththeo, old Rothgar celebrated the stories of his forefathers and the exploits and war of his thanes. And voices rose higher in Herod than anywhere in the world. But they rose too high. For across the fens, beyond the misty crags, there lived a demon deep in his cave. Born of an ancient race of Cain, Grendel was. His huge, foot-long, wolf-like ears twitched and heard something, something he had never heard before. <laughs> Grendel did not like that his peace had been disturbed by the squeaking. Across the Baltic Sea, in Sweden, in the Midlands thereof, there were people named the Gats, and among the Gats there was a young prince who loved the glory of honor and gold, and his name was Beowulf. My pains, said Beowulf one day. There is a beast that is raiding King Rotgar's hall, Hierot. And once long ago, when I was a boy, he helped my father, Edsteo. I remember old Rotgar. I say we go to the mark of the Danes. And we kill this grand beast. Who is with me? And all his thanes stood up at once and cheered. And Beowulf called out, Good, let us build a boat. Beowulf, said Rothgar. I remember you, when you were a little boy. You came here with your father, Edsteo. I paid the blood price for your father to the Vilfings. And now you have come, you are legendary warrior, as strong as 30 men, I understand. But I saved your father, but you are you. Why have you come? Gratitude, King Rodgar. Gratitude. I have come to kill Grendel. Oh, Beowulf, no blade can kill the beast. Gold, bronze, iron, we have tried them all. Therefore, if you're going to kill Grendel, you must do it with your hands. Unlike
unlike Grendel, who did not have the power of speech. Grendel's mother, the demon who had birthed him, could speak. She saw his body with its arm torn away. Where was the arm? Yeah. Yeah. My son! Yeah. Where is your arm? Yeah. And she ran. Across the moonlit fens. Toward Hierot. Beowulf stood at the edge of the bloody mere. The wyverns had been killed. But the water stank and bubbled with chunks of gore. I will go down into this water. Rodgar, if I return alive, as you promised, you will make me your son. If you survive, I will make you my son. Very well. At that point, Unferth, with whom he had argued earlier, stepped over and said, Ah, Beowulf, take this sword. Unforth withdrew a sword. It was Runting. This sword is called Runting. It was quenched when it was forged in blood, not in water. And its blade is poison. It is the greatest sword of the Danes. You will need it. Take it, Beowulf. Thank you, Unforth. I will take it. Uh, we are forgiven, you and I. Beowulf donned the helmet with the glowing gem and dived into the mirror. You dirty thief! You have loosed an evil upon the earth that has not walked in hundreds of years. Where did you get this golden goblet? Ah, I, 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 tell me or I will strike you dead. In a cave, in a cave. You awakened the fire dragon from a cave, you dirty fool. No, no, king, we will bind your wounds. No, it is not the bites, Fiklaf. It is the poison. Fiklaf quickly stripped off Beowulf's mail coat and shirt. Already the wounds from the dragon's teeth had blackened and puffed up yellow. No, king. Yes. Yes, there was no one to come to help me, Figla, except you. Thank you. For once, I was not the only one. 